All right, guys, I'm with Ed, one of my students, and he's still in the program. He's still learning JavaScript, he's still learning React, and he's here to share his experience learning from me, being in the community, um, evolving as a programmer. So, yeah, what's up, Ed? All good. Hey, what's up, man? It's like we didn't speak. Good before. to be here. <laughs> uh, what's that? It's like we didn't speak before this intro, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's start with this, bro. The, the first question is always this. Like, why did you decide to learn programming out of any field that you could have chosen? Does that make sense? Um, a big thing for me is to, to be location-free with my job. So I want to be fully remote and international with that. Mm -hmm. um and uh my previous life um i was a dive instructor and lived abroad a lot and loved living overseas mm -hmm. and then after a few experiences i decided that long term i want to have the flexibility to be able to be back in my home country for a period of time that i choose mm -hmm. um and be away and i actually explored a couple of different up things like ideas of building my own business and working online and stuff and they were i wasn't ready for that mm. um and so my priority was okay i want to do remote work and i've actually got a few mates in coding mm -hmm. um and they're set up pretty nicely in that and so i did a small amount of research on it and then i thought well let's try for a few weeks and practice a bit of this stuff and i was doing this free code camp um, introduction to HTML and CSS. So, you know, it's good. Like, my mind suits the programming, uh -huh. and I see it as a vehicle for my fully location free life. Mm -hmm. So, so initially, you, you that's why I selected it. You wanted to start a business as well, yeah? Yeah, actually, I mean, looking into like an online coaching business, uh, but for me right now, it, I it didn't work out and it's not the right thing to do at the moment it's a skill that's going to come through later on in life i feel um and there's a lot of things that go with running your own business and for me right now my priority is um getting remote work and being able to move around but then quite soon choosing a base that i can have long term so that i can be established in one country full time Mm -hmm. um, and then use that to travel for several months of the year. I can agree that having a coaching business is not easy. It's simple, but not easy. It's, it's not easy. Um, and what's quite interesting, I've moved around quite a lot over the last couple of years and um, trying to be consistent for getting calls um, and having a routine and a rhythm so that you're available for your clients. Um, for me and how I operate, I, I, was, I would struggle with that if I didn't have a bit more of a fixed location. Mm -hmm. um, but also it was like, where do I help? Like for me with the coaching, it, it, you know, mindset and stuff is my big thing. But it, I feel like also I'm so broad and spread in my experiences of life. Mm. Um, it's hard for me to resonate with a specific specific group of people um that are willing to pay at least and so I, I think perhaps going into tech i might well combine the two so maybe in the future with my connections yeah yeah that makes sense yeah narrow it down uh, make some connections maybe create something an online resource mm -hmm. um based around my interests in mindset and performance and self-development um so I think coding is quite like the, the world of programming is quite an exciting thing too, because it opens up the opportunities for you to meet quite inspiring people who are, who, who are um, wanting to innovate and change. Mm -hmm. And so there's the potential to make connections in a tech world uh, that I can't even imagine right now, but you know, I might meet somebody and, we vibe, we have a similar idea and we have different skill sets and particularly if I'm, you know, able to build websites and web applications, mm -hmm. um, that's a huge skill. And from that, something might form. Table so you meet someone. 100%. It's uh, like a side note. I know nobody cares about this, but um, my story a little bit. 
uh, like a lot of people are pushing this idea of starting a business and definitely if you want 100% autonomy and like being your own boss you cannot be your own boss if you are an employee right but mm -hmm. to to build a business you need a shit ton of skills and you need a shit ton of resilience so yeah. you need a at least a hard skill to start with which is which can be like coding marketing or sales if you have like that one of those three then you can build like addition absolutely skills, you know and then you can have a, a business yeah I, I agree i think that the, that the challenge within the coaching world is you know you get your i did a certification for it and even did a business development course which wasn't very, very useful um, it was useful in showing me how not to build a course and how not to think about business. So it was always, they're always useful, right? Even if they don't produce what you expect them to produce. But um, it's just like without a background in marketing, without a background in business. I mean, I have, I didn't even email address for my job for years. I love that. You know, I turn up to a boat, I do my stuff and I go home. Boom. I love it. So for me, like it was like, oh God, what do I do today? There's so many different small things and it's like so many skills in the early days that you need to hone. So you're right without having that core skill. And if you're a marketer or sales or, or for, and, and also like the promotion of um, online business, everyone's like, oh yeah, just make money online, do it yourself. Forget the man to stop working for the company. Um, but if you haven't, if it's not organic, I feel then like, I was like trying to become an entrepreneur, but then it's like if you're if you're trying to do that, and it's not organic from a place of ah, oh, you see a, a gap in the market and you have a skill and you can put the two together. I think that you're you're working against the tide, very much so. Yeah, but that can still teach a lot of things. Oh, massive! Yeah, massive. Oh, you need to be so much. Either waste time or money or both. You know, to figure out both. <laughs> <laughs> figure out those two things you know um now look. and i think risk as well actually not waste but you you know you risk time and you risk money yeah. um as opposed to wait because we can always learn can't we exactly but now let's let's do this like these interviews always go sideways okay so <laughs> like seeing what's inside developer pro the program because it's a coaching business right what do you see happening in there that makes sense? It's it's a combination. So for me, it's like coaching and mentoring. Mm -hmm. um, Is there a difference and, between the two? Uh, so, well, coaching is just looking at the individual and all the answers are within the person. Mm -hmm. And so coaching is really, really just about asking questions about where someone is now, where they want to get to, and what's in their way. Mm -hmm. um, but a coach doesn't have to have specific experience. Like technically I could go and coach like high performing salespeople. If it's about mindset, it helps if I have a background in sales because I can relate to them. But technically you can coach anyone on anything. Right. It's just more beneficial if you have specialism and expertise in you. So you can relate to people and you can speak their language. You know, I don't know how corporate speak. Mm -hmm. You know, I know how pirates speak down at the bar with a few rums down them, but I don't know how corporate speak, so I can't speak their language. I can't empathize so much with what they've gone through, but I still can ask. I've got the power to ask questions. Whereas mentorship is like, I've done this. I've walked this walk. This is the roadmap that I found the most useful. I and I will adapt it to you and see how it fits. Right. I never thought about it like that. I always thought they are the same. Thing. Yeah. Right. So. No. Interesting. That makes sense. It's like so. Basically, mentorship is. This is what I've done, and this is what you should do. Coaching is guiding that person uh -huh. through the journey. And help yeah. them overcome overcome their roadblocks. Yeah. Hundred percent. I never thought about this, bro. But that makes a lot of sense. Yes. There you go, you see? There you go. That's so yours is like a hybrid, right? Uh-huh. 
okay, yeah, that makes sense. It's like my brain unlocked a new, you know, for <laughs> awesome. That makes a lot of awesome. sense. Awesome. Okay, let's. Uh, so you said before you started uh, working with me, you were doing some free code camp and um, mm -hmm. like the classical stuff. I, I've done that as well. Probably a bunch of people have tried that. It's like the most uh -huh. platform that and Code Academy, I think, is the second most popular platform for learning code. And you mm -hmm. started with me in January. What was like the big shift? once you joined i thought about this today because or yesterday because i knew the interview was coming through um, and for me it's the relaxation mm -hmm. that i know i just have to concentrate on becoming great at coding mm -hmm. because the roadmap is there for me the assistance and support is there for me the guidance to keep me on the right track is there for me and, and the plan is made out already. I don't have to think about what I do next. I just do something and ask about what's next. So I can focus 100% on being great at coding. Whereas like free code camp, so the HTML, CSS intro was amazing, beautiful, loved it. I thought it was great and I thought it was actually very beneficial to me before doing this. And I fired through it and smashed it and this was around Christmas time. So I started this, this this idea just like literally about four months ago. I was like, right, I'm going to do coding. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what it was, to be honest with you, at that point. But I was like, right, this is a good vehicle. Um, and I smashed that. And then I did the intro to JavaScript, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it was so, I mean, they were just like, this is an, this is an array. And um, I can't even remember. It was so boring, but it was just, it wasn't giving me any context. And I'm like, this is rubbish. I don't, I'm not like, I just, I'm just copying what they're doing. I don't understand what it is or why they're doing it. Um, and I thought at that point, wow, I mean, where do you turn, right? Because the internet is so wonderful because there's so much information out there, but it's also so overwhelming because there's so much information out there. Mm -hmm. So for me, the pro is about um, kind of, doing a lot of the heavy lifting of the mind. So all the doubts and the fears and the insecurities, you can just park those because everything's in place. As long as you focus on being a great coder, then everything's in place for you to be successful. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you have like, you know, you know how you have the sun, right? With its beautiful sun waves. Is like focusing them uh, with a magnifying glass to burn an ant. Yeah, hundred percent. That's that's pretty much okay. hundred percent. And um, the big question here is, bro, like, how did you trust me? Right, because I'm just a YouTube guy. I had even less subscribers. Yeah. Now I had like four thousand, three thousand subscribers. I was a uh, smaller in January than now, right? What what helped you make that leap? We had that call, you jumped off um, and you started thinking, right? What was your thinking? Process? Yeah. So um, well, what drew me to you was your, um, your, your, you're very genuine on your videos. Like you, you there's a, after having been in the personal health and development world, like I just, I kind of did things on my own and then I started actually pursuing it and getting interested in it and reading books and this, that for about the last three, three and a half years now. Um, and there's a lot of snake oil sales people out there. Mm -hmm. Of course there are. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just the fact that there was a, beneath your message, there's a genuine care for people to do the right thing and get things right. That's what I saw in your videos quite quickly. It was actually very quick for me to go from watching. I watched like literally two of your videos and then booked on the call. Mm -hmm. And then the only doubt, the only reservation I had was because I've invested a lot of money in things like learning other skills and they haven't created a return on investment yet. Everything will come together. But it was like... You know that that investment itself—it's a risk, right? You 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 
put money on the table of course there's a risk and the ultimate thing we want is is it going to give me what i want out of it um and is it a value but i think that um i knew deep down that this is such a, a big transition for me from my old style of life and my very outdoors and adventurous life that a lot of my fears and doubts would probably hinder me if i did it alone mm -hmm. but i know that this is an amazing vehicle for my future and it's going to open up doors that i can't even imagine right now and so there's like fears and doubts that i have within me um but i know that ultimately that's going to be my the only downfall because i have the skills and the abilities to be a great coder i mean most of us do to be honest with you um if you if you really just drop your mind uh so it was like okay i reckon this guy you you honest you genuine um and you offer to work to the end with us and also if we're not happy we can return our money too which is you know there's always a big warning sign if someone hasn't got a refund policy on a coaching program or something like that that's a big red flag mm -hmm. but you weren't promising the world you were just like it's a very you know i will get you to your first developer job and i will get you a high standard in a very competitive world mm -hmm. um so you, it was a very tangible realistic outcome gotcha and so all those things kind of like ticked in the boxes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when, yeah when did you see um like the first not roi because you'll see the roi in a few months right when you start to actually having getting a job right yeah but when did you start to see like okay this makes sense like following the um this, and when did you, did you see like oh i'm actually making some some website because you start with html and css you you were like oh okay this makes yeah. sense how long it took you till you saw that i think i mean to be honest it was pretty immediate because i'm like wow i would never have chosen websites that i felt were as complicated as you chose straight away mm -hmm. um to do um or yeah. quite so big in scale right so yeah so what we say on my youtube videos start with that and i also have the free start course. with that which you can guys can join as well which i'm showing exactly the same thing at this you know so you start so i think um, yeah and it was just okay cool that was like um bigger than i thought i would ever tackled on my own i probably would have just gone and looked at like a small simple web page and tried to do that so i would have i would have aimed the bar a lot lower and then it was like by the end of it when I was doing the last HTML CSS one, it was it was just so quick and so easy. Um, Ferny, I think. The one with the furniture. Ferny. Yeah, that was just like okay, bang bang. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to do this. I need to do that. Um, and then again, it's like the rate, the the frequency of the calls is huge. Um, so you never you never more than a day away from getting a solution and also we have slack but particularly the q a lives are amazing so it's like you're never stuck in in a single frustration for long you can move on to the next frustration quite quickly but you're never stuck in one frustration right <laughs> um and so that was like and and then um i think and then it really kind of started to come in with javascript because it that is it's a big let leap. Me, let me interrupt you there for a second. Um, so one of the pieces of like manipulation that I do in the program, oh, the face changed, <laughs> is the reason why I give you the Apple website is because you have such a great respect for that website and you just uh, think it's impossible, right? Because everyone is yeah, looking at great. You, wow, yeah. Apple, you know, it's it's this amazing thing right and then if i show you how to make it is something happens in your brain and you're like wait hold on hold a minute wait a minute if i can do this then surely i can do the other stuff right so so that was my thing oh, because i've yeah. chosen any other website Very clever. in the video you saw Very it clever. Apple ableton website right 
But then I realized yeah. I could change it a little bit, right? Because the, the Ab Ableton website is also valid. It's also a good website, but you don't but have- But who is Ableton? Yeah, you don't have that respect for it, right? But then if I just switch to, to the Apple website, which in my opinion, it's easier mm -hmm. than the Ableton website, then something switches in your brain and you're like, hmm, wait, I can do the next one. And yeah. The and the next one, you know? So that's- Yeah, yeah, yeah. They use there. It's a very, that's a really wise trick, hey? And I realize now with that, like 100%, because um and it's it's the, the whole thing with like looking up and looking down on people or things it's like if we look up on something we're actually making ourselves smaller so we look at apple website oh i couldn't do the apple website it's apple and then you do it and you're like oh you don't look up at it so much it brings it down a bit which when you bring things down you bring yourself up and it's all about actually being on a level we don't look up, we don't look down, everything's just on level. But you're right, it kind of like diminishes the grandeur of what this is. And you think, oh, well, if that's like one of the biggest companies in the world's website, and I can at least make my thing look like it, and I don't, you know, the only things I can't do are things that I'm going to learn. Exactly. So that was... So that then, was mm, smart. It worked, yeah, good. It's good trick. Those, uh, Great trick. ideas, bro. Same with the <laughs> coffee thing, you know, because I was, I spent for, I spent like three months, six months, because my biggest issue was that I was able to convert people that had some experience, so people that tried a lot of coding by themselves for like three, six months. I was able to convert yeah. those easily into programmers, you know, but then okay. with beginners, it was like a hit and miss pretty much, you know, like mm. some of them, they were dedicated and they were willing to push through yeah. and some, they were like fussy about it. Right. So mm. then I, I spent like six months, like thinking, how can I, how can I do this? How can I do this? How can I do this? Literally every day, my brain was like, yeah. uh, overthinking this, you know? And then one yeah, yeah. click, and then I recorded that video with Klein, the one that is on um, in the program. It uh -huh. was like the final version of my idea. And then I just ran with it. And since then, everyone who went to this just stuck with it, you know? So nice. But a lot of effort for like a five minute idea, you know? It's crazy if you think about it. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, let's talk about JavaScript because while you were learning JavaScript, you had the lady in red effect. Do you know the lady in red? No. I... Have you seen the Matrix? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the Matrix, in the first training program where, what's the name of the guy? Uh, the guy that was um, Morpheus, is it? Morpheus and Neo. Yes, Morpheus and Neo going to the program, right? And then Neo is in this busy street, I think in New York or something like that. And then he sees yeah, yeah, yeah. Red going past. He turns his head. Right. Morpheus said, "You looked at the lady in red or something like that." And then he turns back, <laughs> and then there was an agent, right? So yeah, 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 yeah. It's such a good movie. Oh my god. It's talking about distractions, right? At every level, we have different distractions. And with you, um, you you've seen that um, you were struggling a little bit with JavaScript. I remember. And then you had that free coding bootcamp opportunity. So, what was going through your mind at that point? Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, yeah. It's funny because I I completely forgot about. It. I let go of that whole experience. So what um, happened? That there? Free... What happened there? So um, I, I think I was like I like the idea of learning off multiple mm -hmm. people and different ideas because it helps you expand and and formulate your own. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, at the time. 
I just felt a bit lost um, in JavaScript. I think, again, it, it perhaps was my, there was a bit of like desire and need, because I'm doing this full-time self-funded, right? Like, like there's there was a bit of a, a, um, a state of need that I want to get a job as quickly as possible. And so my, my progression from HTML, CSS had been like a rocket. And then, of course, suddenly JavaScript's like pulling, putting the parachute out the back. You know, whoa, you know, hang on. Yeah. And everybody said that, right? Klein was like, you know, it's you're gonna get, it's gonna happen. He even said it on the on the call uh, just as I was starting it. I think everyone and, and then many people agreed. That's the great thing about the community, right? Because we've all kind of walked the walk for the people that are new, um, and you know. A lot there's a, there's like this general general experience that is true that everyone else is m m most likely going to experience. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I was a bit deflated, but I you know I got this opportunity and I thought well let's have a go. Interestingly, they offered me a place. I wasn't going to take it in the end, but they offered me a place, um, and it wasn't front end. Mm -hmm. It was like oh that that position filled up, but we'll offer you one in cybersecurity. Okay. Like, what? Well, that's not even close to front end. I mean, that's a whole different world. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I just think that's the bother. Um, but even then, it that it, it kind of over that two or three weeks, I transitioned quite a lot in my JavaScript and improved. I think at that point I was doing the Pomodoro stuff, and so that was a, an improvement. Um, you know, like I'd started to see it. I think it was then, like it was, oh, it was way back. Way back. Way back. Well, because it was the original was like, the original was at the end of May when that's when I applied, but they didn't actually come back for about three weeks after that, three or four weeks. March. Yeah. Where in April? April. Mid March. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> I don't know what day it is. I see a bit of sunshine outside. Of in the window it's the uk so it must be like august because there's a sun there's a <laughs> bit of sun i can relate we got it it's the week we got a week of summer awesome um so yeah it did but it was just doubt it was you know there was a bit of doubt and frustration and need at that point um but i also quickly realized because of the amount of effort required in the JavaScript projects, JavaScript projects, mm -hmm. that it wasn't going to be a viable time. Okay, the reasoning was they're asking for twenty hours a week. I'm like, people work full time and they do this in their spare time, and I'm doing this full time in my own time. So I could hold down technically the job of the boot camp and do all this other stuff. But then at the same time, it's like, well, you can only code for so many hours in a day before your brain. It doesn't matter if you've got all the hours of the day free or not. Your physical processing power for coding is limited. You know, like I could go and be a delivery driver and come back and do a few hours of coding. No dramas. I could go and work on the dive boats and come back and do some drive coding. No drama. But go and do some coding and come back and do some coding. Yes. It's a different type of work. Yeah. 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 So. I can understand that one hundred percent. Like, uh, can I say something? Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I was a barista, I was working like full time, forty hours, fifty hours a week, and whatnot, you know. And then when I got my first job as a dev, for the first two years, I was feeling like a piece of shit because I wasn't working eight hours a day. It, it was like <laughs> something like I was like, am I doing enough? Like, I feel bad. I feel like I should be working more, but I'm doing some coding. I'm something on YouTube. It's, it's something didn't feel right, you know, because we are used to at least me, right? I'm not coming from knowledge working. Yeah. The knowledge working space. And even seeing my mom, my mom was leaving at you know 7 8 a.m in the morning and coming late at 9 10 i yeah. didn't really see my mom when i was a child you know pre yeah. start the violins you know and i was used <laughs> with her like seeing her like working hard all the time 
And then when I switch into coding, there's not that much work in terms of hours, you know? So it was weird for me, you know? Yeah. We conditioned to believe that, like, the hard work results in the, you know, the reward. And if you're not working hard, then there's something you could be doing. But, you know, it's the same, man. Like, on the boats, I, I worked seven, eight, nine-hour days was, like, a norm like half an hour lunch and literally that was if we're lucky when your flat taps from half seven till 5 p.m you know just fit, always doing something and if you stopped you were late for something mm. <laughs> you know you were late to get the dye boats out you're late to clean them you're always there. whereas um something like coding i think um it it works so much on you said about the shower right like we we can think we can sit and we can think our way into problem into into we can think our way into a stop but the the, the subconscious and the way the brain works is so powerful that it creates these solutions in the background so actually sometimes the best thing to do is to actually walk away and do something completely different and it's not like you're not working like you're still kind of working on it in the background but if you can produce the goods in, if you can produce high quality code in half the time, who's going to care? And this is, um, is this discipline to know when to take a break? 100%. Like, one, what, like, if we talk about the hustle and being disciplined and grind in society. You know, there's a bit of a conflict now of like people saying grind all the time and other people saying you've got to take your break. But I think, there is great discipline in being able to switch off. There's great discipline in being able to give yourself a day off. There's great discipline in being able to step away. Like I use the Pomodoro timer only recently because I'm working on it. <laughs> right? <laughs> like 29 hours of my life. But I actually, I use the, I use it one online. I don't touch mine. That's what I'm looking at. <laughs> um, but what I do is as soon as that break buzzer goes, I'm like, I've got to stop now. It doesn't matter if I'm like halfway through a line of code, like, yeah, I'll finish a line, but I'm like, there's great discipline in, in dropping tools and stepping away and walking away for five minutes. Um, because otherwise it will suck you in and you'll sit there for an hour and you won't really have done anything, but you think you have, and then you're like, oh, I've spent three hours on coding it's like, no you spent half an hour and then you spent two and a half hours kind of drifting in and out of consciousness i was just thinking <laughs> about this maybe you know how we when you think about discipline we are thinking about military discipline which is mostly physical i would say but i think there are there are two types of discipline discipline of mind and discipline of the body you know or like physical discipline mm -hmm. and and i guess this type of discipline comes from like being able to see the entire process and know when it's time to take the worker or the bee out of the you know out of the flower and put it back to sleep so it can be better yeah picking up flowers next day I absolutely i just came up with this maybe because whenever we think about this, we are true. thinking about like beating ourselves down and punishing ourselves, right? That's kind of no. what people think about. And me, myself, I think yeah. about this thing like that, right? But it's more yeah. like what's going to benefit me in the long run, I think. Yeah. What are the actions that I need to take? Doing the right thing at the right time that's that's discipline and i think this is a new concept for the new world for like the past yeah 20 years this is like a new thing and we are not really yeah, i think so yeah yeah crazy you see how many so it's like i was actually up today in this, <laughs> in this quick call All right yeah. i was thinking about actually speaking about this in our call today um because Imran mentioned about uh, how he can't sit in quiet spaces. He has to be in the subtle, in the city. And what I'm learning about 
in my own personal development and growth and, and stuff I do is about how trainable and how conditioned we can be. And funny enough, this morning I just woke up uh, and was thinking about discipline. Um, and discipline is actually a behavior. Um, discipline, like we're trying to think our way into discipline. I should be more disciplined. I've got to do this at this time. If I'm not doing this, I'm not disciplined people to do this that, and the other. Well, actually, we, like what our behavior is just a response to how we've behaved before and how we've conditioned our mind to be. So a, a good way to think is like with the Pomodoro, right? If I, if that five minute break goes and I down tools and the first thing I do is go and check my phone, every time that buzzer goes, whether I think that there's something important or not, before I know it, within a couple of days, all I'm going to be doing is finishing the break and picking up my phone without thinking. But that's great because that's a con you can see that that's a conditioned habit. So it's like if you just condition yourself to get out of bed when the alarm goes, so you don't, as there's a guy, Jocko Willink, do you know him? I know him, yeah. The, the yeah, right? I he, he, I, I've been employing his concept because he got asked on the Russell Brand show by a guy caller in a q a thing he's like how do you get up early all the time he goes i just don't have the conversation i get up like i don't negotiate with weakness but there is no conversation in my brain that goes on i just get up and so i've been doing that myself my alarm goes if i wake up early i don't entertain the conversation of whether i am or not going to get up or how difficult or how easy it's going to be it just doesn't happen the alarm goes i get up same with the pomodoro i get up but i don't go and check my phone i go and have a walk around i go and do this and that because all you're doing is creating habit and so discipline comes from a behavior of a habit that serves you um, and is beneficial um, and then a lack of discipline is also just a habit that you've conditioned yourself to be so if you conditioned yourself to um, work with a lot of distractions like if your notifications are going off and you've got your phone right by you and you're kind of not sitting down for that full time that you've allotted um, you're picking up a piece of paper and reading it whatever it's like if you remove all those your brain is still going to be like, okay, we've like concentrated for three minutes now. Where, what's the next thing? Like, where, where's the where's the next thing you're looking for? Because you've you've conditioned it to behave like that. So all you need to do is just recondition your brain. It's not easy, but it just it's like I'm going to implement these practices, and then you then it becomes your behavior. So your behavior can be a disciplined behavior. Um, but you've just got to work on conditioning it and be aware of times when you're doing things that go against the conditioning. Your behavior is extremely trainable. You just have to have the discipline. Absolutely. And, and your current behavior right now is just how you've trained yourself to be. You know, your your, your reaction to your... Th or how other people train this. Um, you know? Your, or your... <laughs> I mean, your interpretation of, of what you receive from people, right? Because mm -hmm. we kind of, we train ourselves, but, but we are heavily influenced by other people. Mm -hmm. But then you've got to flip it around to be like, okay, I will influence myself, but I will observe what other people do and use that as inspiration mm -hmm. um, and take responsibility. Was it... Um... Because like behavior creates identity, right? And yeah. before you started like programming, your identity was I'm not a programmer. Right? Yeah. I mean that's, yeah. I'm not a Navy SEAL, right? That's my identity. So I mean how was, uh, how was that transition for you? Creating that behavior. I mean, you are pretty much like you are always in the calls, you created those amazing, you know, um uh, presentations with the uh, closures with mm -hmm. the disc keyword right this is not something that you do if your identity wouldn't be one of a programmer student of programming going the extra mile so what how was that behavior change for you like how easy was it or like 
did you have to do a lot of work behind the scenes to to create this change you yeah. know what i mean because it's not an easy yeah a lot, a lot of, I'd, I'd say right um there's a lot of, and, and right now i mean i i try not to kind of talk um negative self-talk to myself but there's definitely moments of like my ego and my identity going what are you doing man you're like you're dive instructor you used to do this you used to do that blah 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 and now you just give me this dude on a computer sis and what is you what are you doing with your life you know um and so there's like this massive there's a bit of a conflict but what i have is my vision that i work towards and um so i kind of i you know it's good i think it's good in your mind to say you know you are a coder it's like i love my photography i don't make money from it now but i say i'm a photographer because i look for opportunities to take great photos and want to bring something like that into my life in the future but like not getting too attached to it as, as something as the world looks in but but waking up and saying i've made this commitment to self i am going to be a coder i'm able to be a coder um, I have the skills within me to do it. And you are like, even if you're not at the at the stage, like I'm not at the stage where I can get a junior dev job right now, but I'm, I'm capable of coding HTML and CSS. I can do some basic JavaScript. So, you know, five months ago, I wasn't a coder. Now I am. Mm -hmm. um, and very, so the work humble. is on like, you okay. Very, you are very humble because I have the bigger perspective, right? I have the higher up perspective, right? And I can tell you that you're very humble when it comes to this. Like you say, a little <laughs> JavaScript, like I can guarantee you, like probably 99% of people that are in this coding space for a year or two, even some that have a job don't know the little things that you've learned, like with the this keyword, with the closures, like I can guarantee yeah. you that because I've been interviewing wow. in my previous jobs, you know? So keep being humble, that's good, but I'm telling you like, <laughs> you assess yourself on the wrong scale, you know? Because you only compare yourself sure. with yourself, right? And Right. And, uh, and I don't know, don't know the world. Sorry? I don't know the world of coding, so I don't know what other people are like. I've only got this community as a, know, as a, yeah. as a level. I know, I know. But for me, like um, this belief thing to, to transition from having a job and having some side hustle, which is the coaching business, to I'm going to create this coaching business and it's going to be like work class. That's kind of my goal. Yes. It was a three years process. Right. And Huge. It, it, so big. It took so much pain to to switch my brain because probably nobody cares about me, you know, in this business, you know, they all care about what they can get out of me. Right. Which is fine. Yeah. Which is like normal. Right. But, um, I was always, I tried to like scale it up a few times and every single time I was trying to do something in the back of my head was like, if this fails, it's fine. I still have the job, right? So in my mind, it was like, uh -huh. if this fails, I knew it's going to fail, whatever I was trying. And then I have a backup plan, right? Uh, Do you know what I mean? And it always yeah. fails. And I always have mm -hmm. a backup plan. So one day I was like, okay, I can't take this anymore. I have to burn the bridges. And there is no point of failure yeah. anymore. My girlfriend said, no, don't go all in into it my mom was always you know like the classical yeah the typical story bro like they want security right yeah. they want security exactly and then i said you know what i'm not that guy anymore now i'm this guy and it was like yeah a, a week worth of like internal conflict you know and then i made the change you know and then i never looked back since then you know which was cool pretty pretty crazy bro um so yeah fuck i don't even know where we're going with this it was that that concept of identity and stepping into um you know it's stepping into who 
you want to become mm. today because there's a whole thing of like you have to be before you are right and so what i learned in the in the coaching world from a guy a, a really cool thing about the mindset and the analogy i put put towards is like it's so easy to put analogies into health and fitness because many people can relate to that um but it's like if you want to be um you know you want to increase your agility or you increase your strength or you want to just to like increase your long distances and stuff and you look at yourself and you're way off that and it's like you know you can't barely go for a walk without getting out of breath but it's like you have to become that person because you have to start improving your diet you have to start being consistent with your workouts you have to have a plan and a strategy and you have to go when you don't want to go and it's like all that starts before you arrive where you want to get to so it's like we look at things in the wrong way we like oh you know when i've got the great body i'll be like eating healthily all the time no. and i'll be consistent with my workouts like and i'll this. be getting eight hours of sleep i'm gonna start dieting when i ha once i have abs yeah right i'll eat yeah i'll eat better exactly that man and it's the same with the mindset right we have to be like like i i tell myself every day that coding is easy mm -hmm. coding is easy the gap i have is just knowledge and so other people can do it and so i'm teaching myself to look for the ways to make it easy every day even when i'm stuck and struggling and frustrated and want to throw my laptop at the wall i'm like okay this is easy there's a solution it's just that i don't know it yet but i will find out how to do it another and so it's like what there is always another guy that had it worse than you and made it bigger than you yeah you know not necessarily you, but in, in general you know so but in general right you know people have come from more struggle and and and, and surpassed so we are you know we have to get out of our way and that kind of loops back to like the quality of the program um is is that you can focus on that you can focus on um pushing through and you can focus on um learning how to be a great coder and you can focus on things like generating a disciplined behavior around your coding so that you code with focus you take your time off you make sure you separate your mind at those points and relax because everything else is kind of done for you it's like it's like the difference between right it's like the difference between you, you hit you, you grab your backpack and you jump on a plane and you go to a country and you've got to figure it all out on your own great love doing that wouldn't want to change that or you go on a coach tour you know it's like your flights are booked for you the coach is going to pick you up from the airport the hotel's all sorted out for you all the tours and all these days are done for you you just have to turn up and have fun and now personally that's not going to be my kind of fun but it sure would make it an easy stress less holiday right but there's times when you're stuck with your backpack and you're like man i've got an accommodation i don't know where i'm going i've missed the last bus i gotta figure this thing out you know there's a lot of lot of, lot of stuff going on well and so i think with that it's like it really depends like you know uh, i want to bring something up right so when i was in dubai I didn't just roll up in there. Yeah, I had the plane tickets booked. I had the hotel booked, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then during the the week that I spent there, I was like, yeah, whatever. Today we do this. It was a bit random, so it was fun, right? Sure. But when I was in Amsterdam, I okay, let me just book these three things. I'll see this, then walk there, then walk there, and it's a different experience, you know. So they yes. all have their merits, depending on like what the end goal, you know. So yeah but with yours it has the this you know it allows us to focus on what is actually really important in coding right now for us which is just becoming a great coder um and becoming confident um in interviews and getting used to working in a team whereas it's like if you didn't have that it's like when you go on you know you go to some tourist destinations you get off a ferry or something like that and you've got 20 people offering you the best accommodation and 20 other people offering you the best experiences and 20 taxi drivers offering you the cheapest ride into town which is going to be triple the price um 
and it's like that with like when you code on your own it's like you've got all these people saying uh, uh, like this is do our camp and this is the best way and this is easy and i i learned here's my youtube channel and i taught myself um all you need to do is follow me um and it's like all these are great but if you don't have a mentor and you don't have a community and you're out on your own it's just going to be a whole lot harder what do you and the advantage that we have is community is something that we have and it's something that i'm very proud of even though i don't really promote it in the videos i don't say oh you need a community i don't say that sure but to be honest like my favorite part of the week are the coaching calls like sometimes uh -huh. it's a two hours you know like for me it's fun you know unless uh -huh. i don't have something to do or unless my brain my brain mm -hmm. is not fried you know like the, the coaching calls are like the best part of the week well for you how does the actual com community feels like you know because like probably in the future there is going to be some guy that's going to develop some product where you could be learning code from chat gpt you know you just speak with the robot and the robot spits out some things to you yeah how how do you feel developer pro will stand something against that if that makes sense um i think if uh, developing focusing on developing the community um will give it an edge that that chat gbt can never have right because we even if you're one of the biggest introverts ever which i can imagine developing tra attracts a lot of people that identify as introverts at least mm -hmm. um then we all crave human connection and 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 that kind of knowledge that we're not alone and that shared experience you know massive there's a massive thing as a human to to go through shared experiences and that's what the community does it's like the calls hold accountability so it's like every couple of days i have the opportunity to, to ask questions so therefore i want to turn up with questions which means i need to put the work in to get those questions i need to get stuck so that i've got questions Never that i can like come that. to well, it makes sense <laughs> and then there's uh, um the yes yeah, it's, it's i'm getting to know people that show up regularly too um it's just like you know the code wars thing that we started on slack already uh harpreet saying hey i'd like to do this every day and it's like well accountability is massive um so that's two benefits it's that it you know can, communities have accountability and they have the shared experience and i think that if you can harness the power of the community um that's that's something that is um invaluable you know how imran has enemies <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. At least for that, at least you need some, like, yeah. some enemies, yes. Right. I would have never thought about that either. Like uh, he said the other day with Sam. What? He goes, like, you don't know this, Sam. He goes, you don't know this, Sam, but I was competing against you. <laughs> he said to this guy, Sam, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, and I lost. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's also like you can create like few enemies, few that are ahead of you and few that are behind you, mm -hmm. and you always want to either catch up with the the one that's in front of you or stay yeah. away from the one that's behind you. Do you have enemies in the program, bro? Absolutely. Um, I'm starting to. Get, it's funny because I didn't plan to, but I'm starting to get like okay, now I'm, I'm a bit more more like aware as my brain is expanding more and, and, and just i was you know at the, at the start you're just so like oh um focused on the little things but i'm starting to see people okay like okay i can see you know you're just ahead of me so i can definitely catch you up um and then other people like slamming through some of their stuff like going so fast mm -hmm. so then it's like okay well yeah i've got to keep ahead of you but then I definitely, you know, and it's fun to have that competitive edge, yeah, right? Yeah. It's good. It's healthy. It's healthy to have it. And then there's also the awesomeness of like you're sitting on calls and watching people 
struggle with stuff that you struggled with and you're like i got the answers now i can do that that's easy i know exactly what you need to do Uh uh-huh and do you ever find like a different answer to the same problem oh i mean flipping heck like um that's invented like inevitable in coding right yeah (laughs) there's so many different ways to do a single thing um and again it was like the funniest is that says says there with like his notepad and he's like oh yeah you have this i'm gonna note it here i don't know that's so Uh, good i don't know what you're talking about but i note it down and i'm gonna make sure i keep in mind that you know he's uh he's pretty funny with that you know that's brilliant that's brilliant that's gonna give him such a good edge yeah not you know let's uh let me ask you this bro like i i don't want to bro i can go for for another hour if you want but i don't want to take all your time um sure and let people watch it too as well <laughs> i mean those who are gonna watch this they will be like the most committed. they're gonna watch it right that's, that's that's what i want you know people to watch the entire thing you know true they can know you they can know me they know what's happening here you know like yeah what would you what would you recommend to someone that's watching this knowing what you've experienced here with me with the other guys what would you recommend them to do like i know there are like a bunch of people on the fence you know oh is this the right thing i'm gonna still try to stitch few resources together and i'm gonna okay there are some projects yeah, I, mean, I can't even, you know, we talked about like my YouTube strategy overall, right? And yet, like the other day, when I was thinking, yeah. like, if I give you like everything I know, if I give everything I know on YouTube first, people won't follow it. They will be too overwhelmed to do it. Yeah. And then I cannot really give you everything because every person is like totally different, you know? Yeah. And they are still trying to stitch up things. What would you say to a person that is on the fence to tr- that's trying to become a dev nowadays? Like, how would you get that person off the fence if it would be you? To, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> My brain is... Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of some... Um, question because you, you just ultimately people on the fence have, have got their objections right yeah um so on, often number one is um is um, people quite often look at the uh, of uh, the, the sum of money as opposed to the value of what is being given so it's like do you do you actually understand what is um or what is it that you want out of learning coding first of all like what do you really want out of learning coding are you just interested in it are you curious um are you just dipping your toe in the water um if you want to work in coding and get that job then what is your commitment to doing that I would ask and then um i would say what are the disadvantages of signing up to this you know um how is and get some look at how is learning on your own going to be better mm-hmm. than signing up to this coaching and mentoring mm-hmm. um and on a scale of like zero to 10, how serious are you about becoming a programmer right now and getting that job? If you're really honest with yourself, how serious are you that this is something you want to do? And so it's like, you know, look at, okay, let's instead of like looking at, um, so the upsides of signing up to this program. Let's look at the, what would the downsides be to signing up to this program. What are the upsides going to be 
if you so let's let's look at the going on you've been here yeah. let's look at the down, downside that's a perfect uh um way. yeah and i, I, I think, think what are the downsides i can think of one mm -hmm. uh the first one is like what, now what, it's hmm. real so 100 percent. that's what i was thinking you have to do what you said you yeah. want to do right so now you're not playing around anymore now it's like serious so you have to you take an action big boy pants up and start doing the work and you have to confront yeah. your demons which is are you able to focus are you able to you know be disciplined and say no to different things yeah. are you able to maybe fix your sleeping schedule maybe fix your diet yeah. maybe work out a little bit more so you have energy uh are you willing to say no to going getting smashed every friday are you willing to yeah. come home straight away and put those hours in you know so it's getting it's like it, it becomes real i guess yeah. that's one downside if you will that's one i can think absolutely of. Yeah, it was, it was funny because that was kind of like the first one flashing in my head and I was thinking, well, um, but it's very much so that, you know, taking action, um, taking accountability for that, um, putting money on the table, that therefore you're, um, that, which is often a great thing. It's, you know, like signing up for something for free isn't as beneficial as laying down your money because, again, that's additional commitment to yourself saying, I have portioned this amount of cash and I'd say, therefore, I will commit more. You're more likely to commit, right? It's, uh, um, so I, have, it's I have to say two things there, right? First, what's money good for? I'm, I have, can I say something here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now I, I, saved up a bit of cash and I had two options, right? First option was to put a five down, five grand deposit on a BMW Z4 M40i, almost 400 horsepower convertible drive around. That was the first option. And it was tempting, but then the other option was to put half of the price of the car in spread over a few months into coaching so I can understand how to coach better, how to hire the right people, how to scale the business, how to improve my business overall so I can give a better results to my clients. Because the more money I make, the business makes, not me, but the business, yeah. I can funnel it back into uh, bringing coaches okay. in, improving, I don't know, the quality of things, you know, making everything better because everything you want to do is with money, right? And I took the second option because that is the best investment that I can do. Right. So it's like it hurts. I'm you not know, gonna so lie. It fucking hurt. And it, I would have. My little brain was like, "Yeah, but you can drive." But in the same time, like, but I need to pay a bank one k every month. I need to take care of this i need to start traveling so i can use the car which is going to take me away from the business and i was like yeah this car is bringing more negative stuff yeah than positive things yeah but on the upside yeah it's gonna hurt a little bit to to spend all that money because it's a, a shit ton of money right it's almost the price of a boot camp you know pretty much side note yeah yeah but then the upsides of that are fucking insane, you know. Is it yeah. aligned to the to my goal of building a world class business? Yes or no? Yes. I might fail, yeah, but I'm gonna learn something in the future. Oh, so much. But then in on the upside, I can build this business which can give me and my clients what they want, you know. So that kind of was my yeah. Objective, you know segue no it's it's and it is and it's, it's like you know the thing with experience is it gets normalized quite quickly so therefore you buy this new car and you feel great what's you know what what do things mostly we do things because we want us to feel good right we want it to bring us good even if in the time it's causing us a bit of discomfort 
if you're actually uh, um, the wise people go for that long-term gain, not the short-term gratification. But ultimately, they know that there is still, even in the, in the, in the time of discomfort, there is still long-term gain. So it's to feel good about yourself overall. But then, like, you drive that car, it feels great for a week, it feels great for a month. Two months' time, it'll just be another car. Yeah, It would just be another car, and it, you'll start to see problems with it and stuff like that. But I would say to people on the fence, too, it, it, it's, is you know, always looking objectively at things. So it's like, write down, you know, what are the advantages of going it alone and piecing it together? so far what are the disadvantages of that how well has that worked out for me so far you know how, how do i really think it's going um what are my doubts in the process that i'm going through at the moment to get me to my end result and then also then look at their pro look at what are the advantages what are the disadvantages and write those down and start to to compare both decisions of, because it might they, they might not be right for the program they might want to do it on their own but if you don't look at both sides of an argument the advantage the perceived advantages and disadvantages of each side then you'll feel regret and resentment for whichever you chose if it doesn't work out but when you look back and you say hey look i looked at this and thought I, at the time, it felt like the right thing to do, and I made a good effort at making that decision. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you stick with it um, and you go with it. But like the investment in itself is massive, you know, like it's huge. It might not specifically get you what you think, but if you're very open-minded, it can bring you incredible things. Here, I want to say two more things. Um, the price of self-thought is not actually free because if you end up spending three, four years learning code, the potential like money that you've lost by learning by yourself is crazy. Like let's say you are just yeah. making an extra 20K per year because you're a programmer. Then if it takes you three years, you lost 60 with the potential it's huge money that you could have been earning because you are progressing in your seniority, right? So it costs money to be self-taught, even though not money from your pocket, but money that you could have realized, plus the years that you're losing, plus that you start to gain seniority uh, later in the future. That's one thing. Then the second thing is, um, so I have this free program on school, which is literally the beginner of, the HTML and CSS section. I gave that away for free so I can help people first start so they can have a clear roadmap Two, to show that I'm legit, right? And there are like 180 people uh, in that program and probably five actually finished the FinTrend. Right. Right, so the, yeah. the, the because there is no financial investment from their side yeah, they won't make it happen, right? Well, someone yeah. that joins, there is like, no way I'm gonna let this motherfucker, you know, like get away with this. I'm gonna do the work. <laughs> I'm gonna get the work. Right? That's that's the thinking, right? Because you, hundred percent, you know, and, and uh, it's that accountability. Yeah, which is like at the end of the day, like I honestly like even from that free program that I put out there, I do bi-weekly coaching calls. I join, nobody joins. Right, there are like three, four people, max. Yeah, and yeah. they have no questions. It's boring, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Um, yeah. They can see like in the our live calls, there's a bunch of people. Everyone is paying attention. Everyone is like, absolutely, you know, all the time. Committed. Committed, yeah. Commitment. Skin in the game, right? Skin in the game, um, and. What I would also say, um, it just slipped me by there. Hang on. When I, I think that, well, this is going to get me to a job quicker. It's, I, I, put, I honestly think I probably would have thrown in the towel if I was doing it on my own, if I'm honest with you. I probably go, fuck this. Um, this is too much. Crazy, this is, you are this so is not for me. So, like, I'm not, <laughs> you know, you are so good. You, yeah, you are going the extra mile. That's pretty much everyone in the program. 
and it's crazy to see that you would have quit if you right yeah. crazy yeah too too overwhelming too daunted too much of a shift in identity all of those kind of thing but also i feel like my starting salary might not might have to be low mm -hmm. because it's my first job and i have a quite an interesting background i don't fit in a box um so i may end up getting to get but i feel like my progression is going to be quick so i feel confident when i get into a job that um the skills and the deep fundamental knowledge that i'm building now are going to make me like surpass perhaps work colleagues um, and get a pay rise quicker or maybe get a promotion quicker so in like two years or in three years time i'll be really reaping the benefits of this investment for sure like the uk students that i have they either started on 35 or 40 k a year so if you guys are not from the uk that are watching this like what's the average person making in the uk 24 grand i think oh. 24 that's that's average that's not even like the median average let me just google it average salary which is i think it's 24k i, I would imagine it's about 24k maybe 26 let me see and average is a terrible statistic anyway because you know it counts if you've got you know like yeah you've got one accountant making 250k um then these 10 people making 25k <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. So, you know, like, so the average, the average worker is not making um, 50K, right? You'll have nine people making 25K and you've got one person making uh, 250K. Yeah. So that makes 500, just under 500 grand, right? So it's like, four, so they're saying, oh, the average worker is like 48,000 or something like that. It's that, yeah. that math might be off. But actually, nine people are making twenty-five, and one person is making two hundred and fifty. So, averages are terrible statistics for that kind of thing. Um, but it's terrible. Like in the UK, the average wage is 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 not great for the cost of living. Um, but then you take the power of, you know, remote work. If you really want to accept, like for me again, it's about accelerating. Um, get into financial independence right like my my goal of mine is to have enough money in investments and passive or at least semi-passive income that i'm paying for my lifestyle expenses and i can do whatever i want to do and you take that 50 60 000 us dollar salary and you go and live in colombia um or portugal sure. but that's what i was doing right when i was uh living in Czech republic I was making six, seven times more than the average person. So that gives you like amazing access. Amazing. You know what I mean? To save and invest. Oh. And but people like oh, no. still doubt that they they get in for that, but they doubt it's possible. You know what I mean? Like they hear the stories. Like obviously you can do it all wrong, of course yeah like you can do it all wrong and i'm not gonna say there are people that are not doing it wrong but if you are a switched on individual you can make things happen like for example imran wants Absolutely. to get two jobs at the same time i had two jobs <laughs> at the same time i only had the wrong job the wrong second job which is agency work which is going to destroy your brain because you have to That's work it. like a force um but if i would have two corporate jobs at the same time bro Yes, I would have worked eight hours a day. But you'd be cleaning up. You are set up if you make the right investments and stuff like that, you know. Um, yeah, bro. It's, this is going to be the longest video on my channel, probably. Um, <laughs> I could go on forever, bro. Like This is like a podcast for me, you know, so it's pretty cool. Right? Yeah, I should... Um crack on in the top of the hour at least yeah i want to get some uh i want to get some react questions for the afternoon call yes for sure um i guess that's it bro like if you have any ending thoughts let's end with that otherwise um, 
Yeah, it's it's you know it's it's not to say that this is the right program for everybody, but it's for people to go out and take a moment to say, okay, well, how committed am I really to becoming a coder, becoming a programmer? Um, what is it that I believe coding will bring in my life that I haven't got already? Sit down and kind of join the dots there, and then take the time to do that objective look of what have they tried so far? How has it worked out? What are the advantages of continuing down that road? What are the disadvantages? And what are the advantages of coming into DevPro? And what are the disadvantages? Mm -hmm. And to make that reasoned decision. And, um, you know, obviously it's an investment, but that's an investment in self and a commitment to yourself. And you're kind of honoring your step into this identity of being a coder. And it's great, man. I love it. I love the community. I love working with you as a mentor. Um, you know, you've raised the bar, you keep the motivation going. Uh, um, there's of course challenges and struggles and frustrations and doubts and fears and all of that but it's just they're going to be there whatever you do in life so you might as well sort of move towards creating the life that you want because all those things are going to come your way anyway um, and I don't have a second of regret um, I don't have a second of anything but gratitude for actually stepping up and seeing you put yourself out there and and signing up to this program and joining it I'm grateful for it massively. Thanks, bro. Same here, bro. Really appreciate it. Dean. Yes, man. I want to say... All right. Thank you. Like, if if you, the person that's watching this and you decide to speak with me, if I believe I cannot help you, I'm going to let you know. So, if I offer you to be part of this community and this program, I know for sure, like, 95% sure I can help you. Um, if not, I'll tell you from like the beginning or like in the middle of the call, I'll be like, bro, this is not the thing for you, okay? Um, because I don't want to work with someone that I believe I cannot help. I, I'm i gonna be with you guys for a long time and I wanna make sure that I'm having a good time as well, you know? I don't wanna come to a job you know what i mean i don't want to be like oh this is another day that i need to do this you know i don't want to have it i want to come excited and if i see you in the call with me or if i see your question i'll be like yeah this is a cool guy i'm gonna help him out you know like that's the overall vibe that i want to have from my community you know so if i feel like i'm not gonna have that vibe from you or if i feel like you're not the right fit i'm just gonna tell you to find something else you know so nice awesome cool all right ed thanks for being here guys if you're interested or guy or girl if you're interested in this um the link is in the description click there fill in your application i'm gonna read it if i like it we're gonna have the call and i'll show you how it works for you what i do all that good stuff then you can decide if this is for you or not <laughs>